Mr. Fuad Mazzumi, uh, Future Pipe Industries. So the progress inspires to make better conditions for each citizen, right? And that's what inspires um, your, the Future Pipe Industries. Remember, the pipe business is a quality of life. Without pipes, you don't have water to drink, to cook, to wash, and without pipes, we don't take your sewers away. So the business of pipes is definitely to make life a much better place. So that's why we're interested in the positive economy project, because at the end of the day, if you are going to be helping you to develop a better life, then also I have to take it beyond the product itself and try to see how we can work with you so that you can improve yourself, because you know, none of us can improve your life all the time. But we can give you the tools that you can do that, and you can capitalize on our experience, how we can help you to do that. And this is where, you know, with the project that you have seen here, or the, what we do in, in, in Lebanon under the Maxim Foundation, the intention is to help these young men and women to believe that they have a better future. And so, um, you're engaged in Lebanon also with your foundation. What's the targets, the, the main targets? We had civil war in Lebanon for 15 years. Over 250,000 people were killed in this small country of 4 million people. During that time, what happened is that religious ideas were put in the heads of young men and women. They were willing to die for a concept. And this concept has nothing to do with the country. Because you see, the way that you try to pray for your God, whether you're a Muslim, you're a Jew or a Christian, it should not be part of your day-to-day -day decision how you want to rule. You see, if I want to go to the mosque to pray, this is my decision. If you want to go to the synagogue to pray, that's your decision. Which means that we have to keep religion out of the day to day. But in Lebanon, 14 years, the only guiding criteria was to use religion to control political power. So when we went back to the Lebanon, there were unemployment, which is very high, young people that they never been to school. So what we said, if we do not offer these people another alternative to live, another alternative to survive, instead of going to get the three, four hundred dollars from a militia to carry weapons, that's the only way forward. And what we have seen, nobody wants to die. This argument that people would like to die, nobody wants to die. But give them the alternative so that they can rethink that life is not by carrying guns and by fighting. This is how we started. Then it went beyond this, we went into microcredit programs, vocational training. So far, we have had over 6% of the population of Lebanon over the last 17 years. My feeling is that we need to all work together because it's very important that we give these young men and women an alternative to think that really you do not to have to go to extremism because the leaders of extremism are using these young men and women as tools to achieve power. So let us make them wake up like what you're doing here, that there is an alternative in the world rather than to go for fundamentalist movements. What you just said is, is great. And, but I gotta ask a question. How far we are from to make everything happen? And should we, because I believe also in what you say that actually, and should we say that we are dreamers? No, you're not dreamers. You see, let's go back to reality. Okay. Reality is that Syria, I'll give you an example of Syria. Syria was part of a regional deal that the idea was to bring the gas from Qatar through Saudi Arabia to Syria, to Turkey, to offer Europe an alternative gas to the Russian because the West doesn't like Russia, okay? Russia was playing the card with Iran on the nuclear deal. When the project was going to go ahead to undermine the economy of, of Russia, Russia put pressure on Iran, Iran put pressure on Syria, the project was stopped and then the war started. You know, most of our so-called Arab Springs movement that we claim, or the West claims, that this is part of democracy. If you listen to the Egyptians when they revolted against uh, Mubarak, they wanted, we want to eat and we want to live. It has nothing to do with democracy, it has nothing to do with change of regimes or anything like this. Then there were people that realized, let's hijack this movement into a political movement. And that's what's happening. The bottom line, when we are seeing this, everybody knew that Mubarak was a dictator. 
instead of trying to work with Egypt, which is signed peace with Israel, so the Americans have interest to keep uh, the Egypt stable, the fact that they are 92 million, as big as all the Arabs put together, then they should have invested in trying to help, and this is what I said in my, my speech, you need to work to try to get some reforms done. If we can tie in the money to reforms, then we can start preparing the, the transformation. Remember, in the Middle East, we don't have transfer of power. Here you have elections. The night of the election, the next day, you have a new prime minister. In the Arab world, they stay until they are killed, or there is a coup d'etat. So unless we understand that this is something that we all have to think very positively, nowadays, you cannot say, this is the Middle East, I have nothing to do with it. Because there are 12,000 Western fighters fighting there, and they are trying to kill. Assuming half of them, they come back. What business do they have instead of trying to bring in their ideas back into your country? So you cannot anymore say Europe, the West, is away from the Middle East because unfortunately we are integrated. And the sooner we recognize this is a collective problem, maybe then we can start finding the solution. Excellent. Well, the last question, it's about our community. So um, what do you think? How did we host this event? And uh, what do you think about our community? I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. This is the first time I've been uh, to this place. I've heard a lot about it because I do a lot of business in India. But what I've seen, in our foundation, we help people, we train people, we give them microcredit, and then we do not monitor their success. Here, actually, they live with you. They train them, you develop their character, you test their character, you help them to find a job, and then you go. So you are doing one step more than what we do. Actually, you monitor the development of these people. And this is important if you want to have a better society, then you have to make sure you train your people here to get to the point that they can be part partners in the society because in the Middle East, young people, they believe they have no role because they have no future, so they resign their role. And by resigning their role, you're allowing the fundamentals to take over. Mr. Mazzumi, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to have you here. And thank I hope you. you'll be back soon Absolutely. in Sabadignano. Thank you indeed. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you.